In this video, I'll show you how to get four different looks from one grey background. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now, I'm working in a small studio, 16 feet by 25 feet. And if you told me I could only have one background, well, you can guess what color I would choose. I'm always gonna choose gray for a small studio space. And in this video, I'm gonna show you four great setups that you can do with gray. Its versatility is tremendous. Now I've got different gray here. I've got a gray painted texture wall, which is just brilliant. But you could do something simple like have gray seamless paper or even down the, the DIY route with some gray material. This is kind of stretchy fabric that uh, really works rather well. Whatever you use, if you're working in a small studio, gray is your best choice. So let's get a model in, let's get some light set up, let's take some pictures. So today I'm joined in the studio by Beth. Beth's gonna be the model against the gray background and this gray background is just a plain paper gray background. Now we're gonna start with a very simple lighting setup and then we'll get more interesting and imaginative as this progresses. So I've just got a single softbox with the streak light and because of the distance between Beth and the background, we should end up with a background that looks pretty similar to the color you see here. Now, we will test that by doing some shots. I've metered this out already F4. Let's get some pictures in the bag. Here we go. Okay, Beth, here we go. So I've just added a grid to the softbox. So the idea with that is just to give me a bit more direction to the light. If you're working inside of a small studio like I am, a grid on a softbox is one of the best things you can do to really help control and direct the light. So let's get Beth just to step backwards against the background for me. Okay. Lovely. And I'll bring the light in right in front of you. Like that. Now, because I've moved the light, I've got to remember to meter the light. So with the flash meter underneath Beth's chin, I'm still getting F4. So I'm still on exactly the same aperture I was on before. Okay, let's just take a couple of shots like that. So with the grey shot done, let's do black. This grey background can go black really easily using the inverse square law. Now if you want to find out more about the inverse square law, check out the Adorama Learning Centre where you'll find tons of information on how you can use it to your advantage. But all I need to do is ask Beth just to step forward for me. So if you can come in a little bit, that's perfect. With Beth very close to the light and the background relatively further away, the inverse square law says that background should go, well, basically black. I've still got the, the grid on the front of here. That grid is still gonna help me give direction to the light. Of course, I need to re-meter. So I'll get my flash meter, pop it underneath Beth's chin. I'm getting F5.6. I could either adjust the flash or just dial in F5.6. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's take a shot and see if it goes black. And yes, it does. With the light really close to the model, it's not too difficult to make the gray background drop out to black. So we could also make the background go the opposite to black. We can go white by adding a second light. So if I get a second streak light, we'll put it right in behind Beth, and it is in as close to the back of Beth as I can get because this is a tiny studio space. We don't have a lot of room. I'm gonna meter that out. Let's just see what it comes. And I'm actually interested in not how much light is falling onto the background. I'm interested on how much is falling onto the back of Beth's head. Now, if you want to find out why that's important, there's a video on, you guessed it, Adorama TV, about how to make your white backgrounds really white. And I can see that the amount of light on the back of Beth's head is no more than on the front. That means we shouldn't burn out the hair. Let's take a shot, see how that looks.
And there you have a lovely clean white background. It is a little bit more difficult to make a grey background go white than black, but it can be done. So we've done grey, we've done white, we've done black. Well, grey can do one more thing as well. It can go any colour you like with some gels. Now, gels come in different sizes and shapes and colours. These are the gels that you can get specifically for the streak-like kit. I've got a sort of red and a blue. If I combine them together, I get a sort of purpley colour. And I reckon that's going to work really well. So I'm just going to pop that onto the light. Okay, now that's going to affect the exposure when you have a gel in front of the light, less light's going to come through, so it's a good idea to meter, get an idea of what sort of exposure you're likely to get. So if I meter for this now, I'm getting f11. Now I'm still shooting f5.6, the key light, the main light, that hasn't changed. So f11, you might imagine, is quite bright in the background. It's best to take a shot and have a look and see what you get, because you might be surprised. Okay, let's take a shot like that. Okay, Beth, we're just going to do a simple head shot. Here we go. Superb. And as you can see, we've actually got quite a strong colour. Now, the lovely thing is I can change the intensity of the colour by changing the brightness of that background light. So if I drop it down a couple of stops, which I can do here on the remote, let's take the same shot again. And now we end up with a much richer, slightly darker coloured background. It really falls off nicely to a dark grey. That's because the background itself, of course, is grey, which is why if you're going to gel a background, grey is a great colour to work with, especially in a small studio. But I reckon with a bit of a lovely, funky colour going on there, we can get a bit more interesting with our shots. So let's give Beth some props. It's very hard to model without props. I'll give you a pair of sunglasses. And we've got a video explaining how you can use props coming up here on Adorama TV later in this series. Okay, let's just take a shot like this. Here we go. Oh, let's go for a symmetry shot. Let's just bring your hands up underneath. So now you know why grey is the background colour of choice for me in my small studio. And over the next series of videos, I'll be working with grey backgrounds in lots of different ways. Now, if you want to see those videos and the other amazing videos from the fantastic presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to be doing. You've got to be clicking on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.